Chapter 4. Petunia and the Carpenter Everything had been too good until August arrived. The ground was just right in the spring for early plowing, and there had been plenty of sunshine and rain since then. So the corn and alfalfa were coming on real good around Harleyville. The sun began to shine all day without a sign of a cloud to give you a minute's shade. It was awfully hot. Even the healthy green shoots in the field began to brown at the edges, and the dust stood in the air like smoke. On these hot afternoons, me and Caleb used to sit up against the side of the garage where there was a little bit of shade to enjoy. We would usually spend our time out there teasing Weenie or throwing sticks for Petunia to fetch. Most of the gang was away with their parents on trips or at YMCA camp, so we didn't have much to do except get at each other. August was like Sunday, the time just before school started again, and it hung over our heads like a club, making us meaner than a couple of kinky snakes. Caleb isn't nearly as big as I am, but he's built a lot heavier. He looks a lot like Mama and Callie while I take after Papa. At least that's what everybody says. That big mud of yours is digging in the rose bushes again, Caleb informed me one afternoon as we sat in the lengthening shadows. Caleb always pretended he didn't like Petunia, but secretly I knew he did. He just acted that way to spite me. Tough bounce, I said. Caleb looked at me for a moment. Well, don't just sit there like a boob. Get her out of those roses, he ordered. You get her out, I sighed. You don't like her itching her toenails like that. You get her out of there. She isn't my dog, remember? You are going to do everything for her if Papa let you keep her, remember? Those aren't my roses either, I reminded him. No, argued Caleb, but they're my mama's, and we don't like that flea pot of yours scratching up all the roots. Who do you think you are, anyway, the inner circle of the garden club or something? They're my mama's roses, too, you know, I told him, and if she didn't want my dog digging around in there, I'd believe she'd tell me instead of sending a message through you. You're a real big jerk, you know that, said Caleb, after a pause. You just love to pick on little kids, don't you? Not all little kids, Caleb, just the big-mouthed ones. I think I'd rather have an idiot for a brother than you. No, you wouldn't. I have one, and it's even worse. We looked at each other hard for a minute. It was always about this time of the afternoon that we got in a fight. Well, said Caleb, we might as well get it over with. Yeah, I agreed. I guess so. But neither of us moved. It was too hot. The afternoon heat was enough to make you sweat just sitting there in the shade. So we just sat there and thought about fighting while we watched the men put down sod in the front yard of the new house next door. They had built this house in the lot where we used to play marbles between Fowler's house and ours, and now they were finishing it up. Three men were carrying rolls of sod from a truck. They'd put down their load and unroll it and then go back to the truck for more. Me and Caleb found it very interesting to watch those three men unroll that sod. They watched slowly but never stopped back and forth to the truck carrying sod. They didn't seem to know it was hot. Earlier in the summer, the house had been a world of fun. Me and Caleb had played, and had played soldier in the trenches they dug first, and we stood right behind the carpenters and watched them nail up the framing for the walls. Later, we climbed around in the rafters and played Tarzan and wrote our initials in the concrete that they poured for the basement. And then one day, the boss carpenter, who drove a red truck, told me and Caleb to go home and stay home. So we didn't go back anymore, since that was the way they felt. They locked the place up at night now, anyway. Two carpenters were still working on the kitchen cabinets, though. We had seen them through the windows and heard them singing while they worked. Carpenters may seem to be a very happy group of men. Maybe I'll be one. After we had sat there against the garage wall and listened to the carpenter singing and watched those three men unroll sod, me and Caleb forgot about fighting. When do you think they'll move in? Caleb mused. Soon, I guess, I, I answered. I wondered if our new neighbors will have any kids, said Caleb. I don't know, I said. Once I saw a man with a mustache and a skinny woman, his wife, I guess. I think they are the owners. They came around to look at the place. I don't see any kids, though. Caleb had been messing around with a piece of two-by-four that had somehow gotten out of Hoppa's lumber pile in the garage. All of a sudden, he stood up and heaved that piece of board with all his might at the new house next door. Hey, Petunia, fetch, girl, fetch it, he hollered as he threw. The two-by-four hit on a little porch, which stood just, just outside the side door of the new house. The board slid right in through the door and vanished into the house where those two carpenters were working and singing. Petunia wasn't far behind that two-by-four either. Caleb stood there and smiled at me. 
You said to get her out if I didn't like her digging in Mama's roses. Well, I got her out, he said. We both waited and watched the new house for a few seconds. First, the singing stopped and some yelling started. Or else that song had some bad words in it. The men carrying sods stopped and stared at the new house like they wondered why it had hollered at them like that. In a minute, Petunia came loping out of the new house. Between her jaws was a carpenter's level, about two feet long, that I guess she'd mistaken for the board Caleb threw, and her feet were all pink from wet paint. A carpenter came running out the door right behind her. Petunia brought the level over to Caleb and dropped it at his feet. She arfed a few times and wagged her tail, waiting for him to throw it back. I think she, I think he would have, though, if that carpenter hadn't parted the bridge between the houses and glared at us. Hello, said Caleb. Give me that level back, growled the carpenter. She thought it was a piece of two-by-four, explained Caleb, so I threw for her to retrieve. So you was the one that threw that beam, said the carpenter. It was getting, he was getting red in the face. It slid right into the kitchen and knocked over the can of pink paint I was using. Then that big elephant tracked it all over the house looking for your piece of wood, and he finally took off carrying my level. Oh, she's a very smart dog, I brags. She won't ever come back until she gets what you throw, or something like it. Well, I'm a very smart carpenter, said the man, advancing through the hedge, and I don't get, but go back until I get my level. Petunia must have thought that the carpenter was going to do something bad to me and Caleb with that level. Dogs tell everything by tone of voice, you know, and the carpenter's tone of voice must have said murder. That carpenter may not have been a very friendly man, but he sure could have climbed trees, even smooth burst sycamores, like the one that stood between our house and the new one next door. I wish I could climb trees like that, sighed Caleb with admiration, as we watched that carpenter claw his way up about fifteen feet of smooth trunk to get to the first limb. The three men in the front yard had stopped unrolling their sod and just stood in a little group and talked quietly among themselves as they pointed to the carpenter up in the sycamore tree, with Petunia tearing up the ground all around it. Finally, Mama came outside and made me put Petunia down in the basement, but by that time the carpenter was way up among the very teeny tiniest branches of the sycamore tree and still climbing fast it took mama about 10 minutes to convince the carpenter that petunia couldn't get out of the basement then in, he slowly climbed out of of the tree kind of mumbling to, to himself my said mama when the carpenter got down on solid ground again just look at those overalls you look at them lady my neck doesn't bend that way yelled the carpenter won't you send them to me and, and let me sew them up said mama trying to be nice I won't let you, you sew them up, or me either. Just give me my level and let me go back to the job, will ya? Honest to Pete, a working man has a heck of a time just making a living these days. And he took his level and stomped back through the hedge and into the new house. The other carpenter was waiting for him, with, with his hand on the knob of the side door so we could close it, in a hurry if Petunia should suddenly reappear. Where does it hurt, Alfie? we heard him say. We explained it all to Mama. Just as we were about to go inside, the upstairs window of the new house flew open and Alfie's head poked out. He said he was going to sue us and have Petunia put away, but he never did. After a little while, the three men started carrying sod to the lawn, and me and Caleb went back to leaning up against the wall of the garage. You want to fight now? Caleb asked me. Nah, I said. It's too hot. We'll get at it tomorrow. Okay, said Caleb obligingly. He threw his arm around my shoulder and we, and we went back to watching those men carrying sod.